Hello everybody and welcome to what's going to be my fourth episode of my tutorial series for Avorion. I'm Icon and we're going to build a combat fit ship today. So this beautiful little brick here transformed into a real big bad mining ship by now. So I upgraded this thing a bit and we're running now a whopping amount of 12 mining lasers on that thing because I have the insane luck to find an exceptional civil turret control subsystem, which increased the amount of unarmed turrets by six. So at this point, this ship is just uh, very, very proficient at mining stuff, and we're going to use it from this point on. I personally like to upgrade my ships until I am happy with them. So we're now going to trade away a bit of that iron that we got. Like, let's sell away 40,000 units of that. So we got ourselves some spare money to build a new ship with. So, as usual, I'm heading over to that equipment dock. Luckily, by now, the batteries and the generator are powerful enough to get me over to that place. Whenever you want to be safe for that, just stop boosting whenever the energy is not on the green line here anymore as you see here the green thingy is refilling again center what part of the of the screen below that yellow battery thingy and as you see here we're really getting it done now that's mainly because i got a lot of uh, extra generator power in that ship now okay so with that out of the way let's press exit into drone because we're not going to fly with this beautiful ship here so instead we're now going to select the starter ship and let it mine here a bit so we're going to do this here and i'm going to go for the safe mode here for now well 16 percent uh ambush probability well we're going to go for the safe mode for, for starters here and just letting that thing yield us some sweet, sweet titanium. There we go. And now our mining ship is on its way and it's going to be back as soon as it's done with its job. Okay, so let's press B and let's uh, call this ship Tutorial Fighter. So this is going to be a, a simple ship. We're not going to do much of a insane build here. So yet again, green arrow shows the direction where our ship is heading towards to. And for this design, we're going to start working with titanium exclusively because I don't want to have a fighting ship that's fit with iron. I personally can only recommend as soon as you are able to build with the titanium exclusively, just, just do so. It's never, it's never a bad thing. You will benefit from that. Basically, the the better the material you build your ships out of, the better all the stats are. There's just no downside of uh, riding a a titanium hull. So we're going to slap on a couple of these thingies here. Not sure. Is that the width that I want to have? No, we're going to make this thing really. Pretty wide on the rear section. Okay, so now we're putting up smaller smart hole chunks again, like just like the last time. I'm trying to get a couple of smart hole pieces in here, which we can later replace with elements that we might need, you know. That's why I'm leaving those two on two blocks so we can extract it better later. So, of course, you don't have to uh, build flat ships like I do here. This is just my personal uh, build preference right now. The uh, Your imagination is your only limit. Okay, but we're going to build a very similar um, shape to the compared to the first one. Okay, so you already know the drill. We're going to try to put on some engines on this ship. So here I'm going to put up a one one large engine block here. Boom, just like that. So we are now at a max velocity of 
295 meters per second. I'm not happy with that, so we're going to slap on another set of engines here. Because this is supposed to be a fighter type ship. Therefore, oops. I want to have a bit more a bit more engine power here. So we're going to transform a couple of these blocks into generators now. You remember holding down alt. And I'm using these in interior blocks here because they are pretty well defended. And we're also going to need a couple of crew quarters. So here they are. Let's see. I think 20 people should be all we need. And let's add in some... Where is it? Some cargo bays this time as well. Because... We can loot stuff while we're in a combat engagement. Okay, so now we need the thrusters. You already know the thrusters, so we're going to put up side thrusters this time here. Something like wings this time, why not? There we go. Just keep in mind that you should never ever rely whoops, on, on ship parts like that alone. Especially if they are poking out of your uh, out of your build like that, it's one of the first things the enemy can shoot off. Therefore, we're going to put up oops, some thrusters here on this part of the engine, and also on this part of the engine. These will add in some mobility here. There we go. So, this whole thing is a little bit bulkier than the last ship we built, you already might have noticed. So I'm going to build a little thruster piece here also on the, on the front end. And we're now going to fill up with a couple of smart hole pieces here. Boom, just like that. And I want to have some ex, uh, extensions here. And as you see here, we have now four subsystem slots this time. That's a good thing. So now, whoops. There's one thing I'm unhappy with, and that's the lack of armor. So we're going to put up titanium armor now. So I want to put armor plates on top of all these susceptible parts, it's especially the, the generators. Yeah, let's ignore that mail. So to do so, I'm just holding down control and now I'm holding down W at the same time and moving the mouse downside. So while you're holding Control and W, it will usually W is that button you need to press to uh, to to alter all dimensions at once. But if you hold down Control, it'll automatically check out which dimension is necessary to top it off. Let's see here, it all makes super uh, super uh, lots of amounts of sense once you once you try it out. So what we're going to do here now is pretty simple. Slap an armor plates on top of the uh, generators because now the enemy first needs to fire away the armor plates before he'll reach the generators. We could also of course do the same thing for the crew quarters if you feel like you're uh, you want some safety for your uh, for your crew. It's up to you. I personally will leave it like that, which is a little bit, a little bit uh, risky, but, you know, design in this game is always up to the player. Of course, there's one more thing that I haven't shown yet. So when you select a certain piece of block, for example, here, the smart hole, down here, there's, uh, there's edges and corners that you can use, for example, give me, let me use this one. So here, to get that smart edge on on into the direction where you want it to, you have to press and hold R, and now you can see you can select the rotation that you want to have. We have to rotate into this direction there, and as you see there, smart edge. Let's uh, look for the proper dimension. There we go, and boom. Let's put up this time. Hold down R for the proper rotation again. Press those thingies. And here we go. 
Cool. Just like that. And we'll get to do this for the other side here as well. So these are not entirely aesthetics only. Let's, uh... These are also protecting the ship. Because it's smart blocks. Therefore, they increase the whole HP and the ship's integrity at the same time. Wait a sec, I just did them exactly the wrong way. There. Anywho, you get the idea. Those uh, rotational thingies. Here we go. You can't just beautify your uh, your ship a bit with these uh, smart corners to make it look less like a brick here. So, for example, we could now use... Also, there's also twisted corners that you can use. So... If you're looking for a specific uh, touch there, these can be your, your problem solvers. So, for example, I could put in here such a look to make the whole thing look a little bit more twisted. But let me... Something like that. I, I think you get the idea. So, whoops. Let's redo that. And this is going to be the ship we're working with. Now, let's get over to the turrets. Right now, I don't own too many uh, combat turrets, so let's change that for now. The only thing that I'm already going to in install is the point defense cannon. Point defense cannons are the stuff that will try to shoot missiles away from you. That's why I personally like to have point defense cannons also on the rear side of the ship, because missiles and torpedoes, they tend to chase your ship. So, now we'll have to uh, move slowly towards the uh, equipment dock there, because, you know, we're totally out of personnel, and also we're out of gear. So we're going to check out now crew wise. We're going to need at least one gunner, but that's definitely not gonna be enough. We also need other people here. So for for now, we're focusing onto the subsystems. So auto turret control system, as you see here, six hundred and twenty-five thousand. Oh, we actually we actually got lucky here. So combat turret control subsystems, these are these are the the stuff I'm looking for. Wonderful. Let's buy us a couple of those. And I'll be picking up one one regular turret control subsystem too. And let's check it out. We're Ah, here, a mining subsystem. Sadly, I wasn't able to find these. Okay, well let's go there. I wanted to find one of these mining subsystems when I was explaining mining the other other day, but well, okay, so we put these uh, combat turret control subsystems in there, and one regular of these, as you see here, this is ATCS2, ATCS3, they even have upgraded versions there, so we put these in, and I'm also going to put in a revealing radar booster, so we have more than enough energy, so let's install these thingies permanently. Check out our energy budget now. Well, I'm not that happy with the energy budget. So install that one as well. So yeah. Press B one more time. And we're going to install a little bit more generator capacity here. Because, you know, it's for my own taste, not, not enough energy on that ship. What you also could do there is energy containers. Oh man, I totally forgot the integrity field generator. The integrity field generator is something you should definitely fit in to every into every um, titanium made ship. This is your uh, your your poor man's shield generator. So as you see here, the blue area there depicts how much protection that integrity field will provide. Go, we we'll place it somewhere here. Of course, um, you you should you should try to place it down somewhere less prominent than I'm doing here right now. You know, this is not exactly the right spot for 
or a shield generator because, you know, it could be shot off. So long term speaking, you should definitely try to um, to armor this thing. Oh, wait a sec. It's not it's not armoring the uh, rear section now, so we'll have to have to rotate this like that. So, but I think the uh, the way it works is pretty simply understandable. You just have to put the elements of the ship inside that area. Okay, so we're now going to slap on some extra ex extra generator here. Why not? Oops, wrong dimension. There we go. So make that a little bit wider and now we have some extra gener generators on top of that i could also armor them but actually we should do this you know it's generators after all so here you can also press control and just uh you see what happens the game puts down fitting uh pieces there fitting pieces of armor Except for the, except for these, where it just doesn't. Uh, well, it looks crappy with the uh, with those uh, tiles I got there, but whatever. So here you see, pressing W. Okay, so now we got we got more power on that ship. And we also got 10 armed turret slots now. So what we're needing now is guns. So turrets, double chain gun turret. If you ever find orange gear like that, just lying around, just buy it. If you ever find titanium gear, buy it. It's a lot stronger than iron gear. Um, beyond that, it's the, it's the same, it's the same logic as always. The better the color of the gear, the, the higher the power. You can also sort them by rarity. That's something I like to use here. Okay, so now we got the job to put on 10 different guns on that thing. So while you're, you're, while you're building your first combat ships, don't try to worry too much about the type of guns that you will be using because at the beginning of the game, you will always use whatever you get, you know? Right now, we're just uh, building... We're just slapping on guns just as they come. So, we're just going to go for these. If I remember correctly, I needed five more. So, as you might already have noticed, it's uh, it's a pretty costly process to build your, your first combat fit ship. But I'd personally recommend you strongly to to wait until you have the capacity to to fit your ship like that. So now we have two more slots open, one unarmed turret slot and one more defensive turret slot. For the unarmed turret slot, I'm going to pick up one purifying laser, uh, one purified, no, not mining laser, sorry, a salvaging laser. I'd love to have more salvaging lasers, but you know, we can only have one unarmed turret. So we have one more defensive slot open. Let's check. Let's check if we can get another point defense cannon. Point defense cannons are really good because they keep missiles away from your ship, like I said. So one point defense cannon on the rear, one point defense cannon more on the middle segment. Now we're totally stacked out and we're also totally out of personnel. So let's hire some crew. So gunners, we need half a dozen people, uh, a dozen people. So we don't even get all the gunners that we're needing here for our for our ship here. So only partial amount of gunners is going to be here. So we're needing more engineers and mechanics. So I'm going to press N and now let's check out the other stations, higher crew. So there's mechanics on this one, miners, well, I'm not interested there. I'm trying to find a station that has all the personnel that I'm lacking right now. So they don't have gunners, but they have all the rest. 
they have gunners these these guys are the place i'm looking for so repair dock we pick that ship double click right click and put that to an auto docking sequence there we go so we'll have to go for the uh, dock there and just like the last time i'm uh, just using that action to to give me an idea so sadly we're totally out of uh, people therefore our ship is just flying like a snail if that ever ever happens to you and you're just impatient like i am here you can also go for vanilla crew and that's what we're going to do here we're not going to roll with specialists this time just to show you that it's not that uh, terribly necessary there but that's how your ship's working out without crew. Not that awesome at all, isn't it? Biggest problem is that all your uh, engines and all that stuff are going to be super crappy. So we need two people, two people, 1.5 people makes six people. So we're recruiting six vanilla crew members. Press I. Go into the crew, go onto auto assign, and well, everything's done. So let's check out that thing how it rolls when it do when it's not under supply. So we got one thousand four hundred meters per second, but the energy is depleting rather quickly. So well, with that kind of engine power, it's just like that. Also check out the yellow dots, the, those yellow blips shown up now. These are shown up because my ship has installed that radar booster. So what we're going to do now next is press N and I want to check out if I'll, if I'm able to find a captain on one of these uh, docks there because you know, everything's better with a captain. So these are unspecialized captains as you see here this dude has no specialization and he'll gain a specialization once he reaches level five your captains level up when they do missions all right so there's no captain here that doesn't matter we're just going to go over to this uh, yellow blip there and jump over there there's one thing that you really have to pay attention to yellow blips are theoretically dangerous Practically, they also lead you quite often into um, into asteroid belts and other useful things, but you should not try to surf into a yellow blip area with a not combat fitted ship. That's just not going to go well. So here in this scenario, let's press M one more time, we see we were lucky. There's roids in here and nothing else, but you never know. and. Once you have a combat ship, you can have a lot of fun with just surfing around and taking uh, and uh, exploring these. If you want to have a real proficient explorer ship, there's one thing. As you've seen here, I ran out of power. How did that come? That was because I'm not running enough generators on that ship. So the, the required and the generated energy difference is too high. And this ship, due to its high mass, needs quite a lot of uh, hyperspace jump energy. Therefore, if you want to change that, and if you want don't want to have these problems, you either build more, more generator, or you can also build just energy containers. These work like batteries. When you slap them on, you have more stored energy. That does increase one thing. That yellow bar down here will store more battery. That does not recharge your batteries quicker. It only makes it so that your batteries deplete slower. So if you want to jump often and much and explore a lot, your ship will have to have a lot of generator um, capacity in combination with a uh, preferably low amount of mass because the more mass on your ship, logically the more power it'll need to go into hyperspace and the more power it'll need to be boosted so 
Ah, here I was looking for something like that. So here, be careful. This is a pirate mothership, but it's actually exactly what I'm looking for because I hope that ship is going to be powerful enough. If not, we're so the first thing before you do one before you do engagement with pirates, select your uh, select your escape coordinates, program them in, and you just uh, get closer there. So. If you're insecure if you're going to make it or not, don't you worry too much. All you need to uh, make sure is that you have an escape plan and you have enough battery. Enemies at this uh, point of the game don't lock you down. So down here in the in the lower section you see now at the enemy how much Omicron fighting power they got. So this one has 44.3 Omicron fighting power. I got a lot more than that, so we can't just blast that dude away. That mothership is immune against my damage. Okay, I'm pretty sure this is uh, because I'm not, I'm not taking down his uh, buddies there. So taking down that one and pressing R, by the way, is selecting the closest enemy. Well, no, this dude is immune against my damage. Whatever. If that happens, I wanted to show you that anyways. You just escape out of that situation. If there's ever a fight you don't want to fight, make two things sure. You have a full battery before you go into that fight, and you have a jump point already designated beforehand, because otherwise, you know, you could, if you're unlucky, also get shot down while you're configuring that new point, get shot down while your system is uh, calculating the next jump, and so on and so forth. And as you see here, I've already lost a couple of parts. We've lost a couple of those thrusters. So that's also a reason why you should always have access systems that you can lose. Because otherwise, it's going to be hard. So when, when your ship is damaged, just press B. And there's this repair button here. Let's click that. And as you see here, it will cost me 5,000 credits and a couple of titanium units to repair the damage there we go that's that and this is how we roll with a combat ship it's not that super hard to build one and it's very very rewarding to do so you of course will have found a lot of things that you could do differently there i mean i don't say that this is a uh, perfect ship but what i want to say at the end of this video searching for combat and taking down pirates is a very, very, very lucrative business. And that's mainly because your enemies drop a lot of items. These have a certain glimmer to them. Oh, well. I'm going to do a combat tutorial um, one to, sometime soon, don't you worry. But looted items are worth a lot. And by the way, this is a wormhole. If you ever run come across one, you see blue line here shows where it's going to be headed roughly. I strongly recommend you to attack the sectors sec add, no, not attack the sector, add a note and I personally like to mark wormholes because I I tend to overlook them and they are just freaking brilliant shortcuts for whatever you have on your mind. So we're now looking for trouble here a bit. And if your ship, by the way, is low on energy, in general, don't do what I did here. Always wait for the hyperspace jump until your jump route has been calculated. This way you save up some of that valuable battery juice. But in general, when you feel like your ship is using too much battery while jumping, just increase the generator power. I personally went really, really good with that. Because yes, generators are quite costly, but at the same time, the most costly resource in this game is uh, your personal playtime. Because that's the only resource that which you can't increase by, by just playing the game. None that I know of, at least. I don't know if there's any time dilution effect, which makes you, which makes the time 
uh, go by faster, just like in uh, the X series, for example. If I remember correctly, that had something like that. But yeah. Ah, here. That's the typical pirate system. So pressing R to get uh, to get into these dudes. And I'm slowly getting there because I want to save up my battery. Just like I mentioned before, we're going to set up one point to flee towards two, although I'm pretty sure that this will be a super easy fight. So we got 44.3 Omicron on the enemy, 33.2 Omicron on that. Like, most enemies are just a joke out here, even on veteran difficulty. There we go. Just have to nail them down like that. The early game enemies are all that easy. Like, there's really not much to them. The more armor you put on your ship, of course, the, the harder they will have it to kill you. And, yeah, well, it, it's all quite similar to the mining minigame. You, you just have to shoot at moving objects this time. But overall, as you see, it's that easy. See that white thing? This is loot. Here. Take, uh, pay close attention to um, green or other, or differently colored containers that pop out of your enemies. This is uh, depicting the rarity of these items, and that's really, really, really what you're looking for in the long run. Okay, so that's your basics of fighting. And once you have a ship that has a couple of Omicron uh, shooting power, like uh, something like three or four hundred, you're good to go for like most of the things. It's up to you whether or not you go brave or whatever you want to do. You can go earlier for for pirate combat, like uh, compared to what I did here or later. It's all up to you. There's one thing though that I really can't emphasize enough. That loot here, especially those uh, that stuff which is uh, glowing yellow-ish, like that here, that's just what you're looking for. Because there's uh, some of these modules, they cost you sometimes several hundred thousand credits to acquire them. So it's really worth it to fly around after a pirate engagement and pick up all these juicy tidbits. Another random thing that I want to mention there is Whenever pirates enter a sector and get shot down by random NPCs, you can check out what they dropped, because quite often they drop quite neat things. So one last thing before we leave. I am going to set my real guns here all on group one. So left clicking, pressing one. And my, my salvaging lasers on group two and the point defense cannons on group three. So I'm going to disable now these, and when you get close to your enemies, really close with the salvaging laser, you can dismantle them, just like you dismantle asteroids. And check it out, we're gaining iron out of that. So you can dismantle and mine wreckage if you want to say if you want to say so as you see here we're gaining more than 100 units of iron here so that's a little bit of a uh, extra income source if you want to say so you can you always get exactly back what's uh, inside the package basically so if you want to maximize your your income with wreckage you wait a sec um you should be looking for generators and all those uh, really costly parts on the ship wreckage because these are what brings in the most. So last but not least, check out those containers here. For some reason, some crazy dude built all these containers here in that field. Some areas just look like that. They're uh, purely decorational, but you can also salvage them. And they're if you're wondering what the fuss is about at least, there are hidden uh, valuable containers in there. It's not meant for uh, to be salvaged, you know. Just uh, wanted to show you that you can actually do. Okay, dear friends, so that's how you put up a simple combat ship. Of course, this is just the fundamental basics as usual. You can do much more than that. And we're, of course, going to build a super sassy, heavy uh, combat ship sometime later in the series as well but 
I just wanted to show you how to put up a, a simple ship, something that you can fight with, and except for motherships and entire space stations, this design is ready to blow up enemies just like that easily. Okay, dear friends, so that's it. I thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you had a good time. I certainly did. And we're going to check out in the next episode what kind of uh, new things we can do there. I'm thinking about either setting up an exploration ship or a trade ship. So I haven't fully decided yet what kind of uh, gameplay we're going to explore there. I, for myself, I will just now fly around and kill some pirates and loot some stuff so we got the necessary money to continue our adventures. So, drop your comments down below, leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed, and of course consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. I'd be super happy to have you, and I hope you had a good time. See you guys next time, and goodbye.